Hello and welcome to the Tottenham America channel. Today we'll be looking at back at Tottenham's 4-0 win over Aston Villa as they came to Villa Park with a big three points uh, needed today from the performance. We had to get these three points. We had two games in hand um, over Manchester United and this was our game to get back on track climb closer to Villa and that's exactly what we did we were on 50 Villa were on 55 they had played 27 games we were still on 26 but we took the three points today which means we are two points behind Villa and we still have a game in hand we remain in fifth our goal differential is better than theirs after today's 4-0 win and we have the chance to go above them with that game in hand which is a huge huge opportunity which means that and that that um, Tottenham going into fourth, that chance is all in our hands. There's no outside factors. As long as we win our games, we will go into fourth place. But let's talk about the performance today. Um, so good. What a performance today. This is the first time since, I think, we lost four one against Chelsea where we've actually seen our team in completely full flaw. And we didn't yes. even have Richarlison back. Yeah. It wasn't even our full team. But yeah, I agree with you. This is the first game where I really felt like we were just in full flow across the pitch. Like, you know, I think first half was a little shaky, definitely. Um, honestly, we controlled the game. We just weren't playing into their box enough. And so I wouldn't say it was a bad performance in the first half, so to speak. I just think that we should have gotten a goal. Um, and we, 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 we gave up a lot of chances because we were trying to pass too much instead of taking a shot. Um, but it did eventually pay off. If Tottenham only played second half, we would be the best team in the world. Yeah, we'd be so good. We And our goals also come in bunches. Like yeah. You saw with Madison and Johnson, three minutes apart. Yeah. Son and Burner, both three minutes apart. Yeah. So that that makes us really good at comebacks. It's as especially if we, um, in the game. we exploit them when they're most vulner vulnerable. You know, when they're just setting back up for the um, kickoff after the goal, that's when we exploit them because they're, they're not ready playful. for it. Playful. They're not ready yeah. for it. Which is, I think, really smart from us because... Um, it means we can really double the impact. But, I mean, what a game today, especially that second half. Nothing in the first half. Um, I thought Van de Ven was definitely our best player in the first half. Van de Ven played pretty well, he yeah. He was um, stopping attacks like crazy. Romero did make a few mistakes in the first half, and Van de Ven covered up for them excellently. Um, I thought Pedro Porro on his return was really good in the first half. He stopped a counterattack where Villa had two people um, on the goalkeeper and Pedro Porro gets in the way and puts it out for corner. It was offside in the end, but still really good defending. Um, but I just thought that we were a little slow up front in the first half. Besides Brennan Johnson, I thought Son Madison Kulusevski could have done a little bit better. We come back up for second half. That's exactly what happens with Madison's goal. What a cross from Saar. It was a brilliant cross right into the six-yard box and a great finish from Madison. Yeah. I, I'm still, like, struggling to understand what um, Aston Villa's idea was with letting Saar have so much space. Like, they did not have a single man on him. And that really paid the price because Saar is, like, when he's got space, he can really work. Yeah, Saar, especially with his dribbles and his passing. His passing, especially forward passing and carrying the ball. He's basically just like Basuma, except... He's a little less physical, and I think he's got more pace. Yeah. He's definitely got more pace. I think uh, we also want to cover that uh, Mickey Van Deven went off with another injury. Uh, he was holding his hamstring. However, I think he was able to walk off, and there was not as much pain involved. So it could be a good sign. But that means we saw Radu Dragosin for an extended period of time, and we can cover it quickly. Maybe we'll go back to it at the end. But Radu Dragosin, I thought, really, Yeah, he played really, very well. Every time he, he was trusted with defending, I never felt like we were going to concede. Yeah. Like, he just has a reassuring presence, kind of like um, Van de Ven, where if, you know he's going to defend. Yeah, if Van de Ven is injured for two weeks plus, this is a huge chance for Dragosheen yeah. to show what he's worth. And I think already in this, like, what, uh, 40 minutes that he had today, I think he did really well. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Three minutes after the James Madison goal, Brennan Johnson gets his goal. Uh, it's a great assist, tidy assist, from Hyun Min Son to get it into the feet of... Brandon Johnson and Brandon Johnson just has to crash it into the roof of the net. People, you know, were attacking him for his, so to speak, lackluster performances. This guy got five goal appearance, goal involvements in the last six games. That's not bad from a winger who everyone is calling not good and a waste of money. Five and six is really, really good. If you're talking, if you were talking at the beginning of the season, beginning of the season, he just wasn't getting enough time, playtime. Yeah, period. Yeah, yep. But at this point, he is um. He has really come up to be a huge inter integral part of this team. We've brought him on every time the last couple of games in late 
in the late periods of the game and he has scored there's a reason he got his start today although Werner score did start uh, score last week I think he was out because of an injury of course the perfect opportunity for um, Johnson to start and he really took it well because he I thought he was the only attacker who from minute one to um, minute 88 was just good he was solid the whole time yeah very consistent very very consistent he's so sm silky smooth so so silky smooth that got us to 2-0, and then we waited um, a long time, even past the 65th minute when John McGinn takes a volley kick into Udagi's upper leg. It could have been a leg breaker. Um, and for the first time in probably ever, a referee against Tottenham um, decides to give the player a red card. Well, I mean, it didn't even go to VAR. The referee made the on-field decision of a red card, and that was, I mean, it was a ridiculous challenge, but like, we finally he didn't, got a he decision didn't. in our favor. I mean, we've had decisions. We've in, had decisions. Obviously, favor, Liverpool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can't really be talking. It felt but, good. It felt good. Because yeah, I think felt this was a first little time bit of a borderline one. But yeah, yeah. this is the first but, time. But um, he, he made no attempt to play the ball at all. Yeah. Nope. Nothing. He didn't even take a look at the ball. I think he just literally took a leg at um, Udogi. He's already 2-0 down. I don't know what the goal was there. It was just only 65th minutes. Not that late in the game. Yeah, exactly. You have a chance, though. Um, and then in the 90 plus first minute after we held that 2-0 lead for a while, Mr. Captain Hyun Min Son scores, smashing again the strike into the roof of the net. Uh, Kulusevski gets his assist off of Son's goal and we make it three. That was another great goal. Son really deserved um, a goal today because I thought in the second half he was very, very good. Yeah. Very good. And the one that we were all waiting for probably the best goal just because of who scored it in the 90 plus fourth minute timo werner gets his second in two consecutive games as son hyung min and ben tunker combined on the edge of the box before son finds werner on the inside of the box and kind of um inside foot with the heel um the spin going away from the goalkeeper into the side of the net Co call me crazy but i think two weeks ago he would not have finished this yeah um honestly his his other goal was pretty much an easy tap -in. yeah However, it still this required one, composure. This one actually was looked like you he, need you he, need to measure that right. Yeah, now. this it this one looks like he actually has the striker instincts back. Yeah, and you know that's a goal that um I think first time is sometimes can be hard to score. Yeah, the ball's coming at you right, and you have to get that outside spin on it, but not too much that the ball doesn't go outside of the post. And I think Verna executed it perfectly. And I think this is the start of something special for him at Spurs because Definitely is. he's been exciting for us the whole time he's been here. He's a great dribbler. Uh, well, you know, he's got great pace. And if he can get that finishing in, we've got a really, really complete set of forwards. Because let, let's run through our list right now. We've got Son, the GOAT, of course. Brandon Johnson is finally making his start. I'm sure Kulusevsky will come back. He's had spurts, right? Today was, yeah, I think, second, today was second half was good. Moment. James Madison, of course, is James Madison. And then we go into our subs, right? We've got Timo Werner. That's a huge... Timo Werner is the huge one because he, we that means we have a bench option. You also can't forget and about Richarlison. Richarlison. Nine goals and ten appearances. That guy, we cannot forget about him. That means we've got two bench options that can come on and impact the game. This is the best forward line. We've had Harry Kane, I know. This is the best forward line all around that we've had in a long time. Since uh, Deli, Erickson, Kane's so, on, yeah. I think. Uh, as long as like Richarlison or Son can find the long range shooting back, I think this is one of the most all well round attacks attack units Spurs has seen in a long time, which says a lot. Yeah, um, I want to say since the eighteen nineteen season. Honestly, yeah. except not yeah. even the eighteen nineteen, the seventeen eighteen. Yeah, the season before 18, that 18, 19, we was where we saw the decline. A lot of injuries. Exactly. So Kane Kane was injured for quite a while. Yep. Um, I believe Erickson was. I don't remember if Erickson, Erickson was out for a little yeah. bit. I think Delhi might have been also out. Son was the only one who actually lasted the season, I think, that year. Yeah. Um, but that's it for our review of Tottenham's 4-0 win over Aston Villa as they stay in fifth, but they are now two, uh, just two points away from Aston Villa with another game in hand. We play again next weekend, Saturday, March 16th at 1.30 p.m. Um, Eastern time against Fulham away at Craven Cottage. That'll be another must-win game um, if we want to keep, uh, you know, getting back into the top four race. If you enjoyed and want to see more Spurs content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below your thoughts on this game. And until next time, come on, you Spurs!